What is the best camera for bird photography? Is it the Canon 5D Mark III, Canon 5 DSR, Canon 6D, or Canon 7D Mark II? Hi, I'm Dick Scott with RC Scott Photography. In this video, I'd like to tell you why I would prefer to shoot with a Canon 7D Mark II crop sensor APS-C camera as opposed to shooting with a full frame, either a 5DSR, 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, Canon 60, or the 1DX Mark II. Uh, they're all full frame cameras. So the video is more about why I would want to shoot with a crop sensor camera versus a full frame camera. And I'm going to show you that in, in pictures here in a little bit exactly why I prefer that. Uh, you have to understand a little bit about you know, what a crop sensor camera is. Uh, if you take a full frame camera, the sensor in a full frame camera is basically the same size as a piece of 35 millimeter film. That's where it came from. It came from the film days when they made the first sensors. They made them the same size. So it would give you the, basically the same effect if you were shooting with a digital camera as opposed to shooting film. Uh, also, if you look at all of the lenses that are out there now, all lenses are based on 35 millimeters. So a 100 millimeter to 400 millimeter zoom lens is a 100 millimeters to 400 millimeters. That's what it will show up as on the sensor and that's the size it will come across. However, if you take a 400 millimeter lens and you stick it on a crop sensor camera with a 1.6x crop factor, which is what the Canon cameras have, Nikons have a 1.5x, you multiply the 1.6 times 400 and you'll get 640 millimeters. And that's, that's 240 millimeters longer. So basically your 400 millimeter lens is now a 640 millimeter lens. So if you've always wanted that 600 millimeter, 12,000, 10 to $12,000 Canon lens, well, this is a cheap way to get it. Because if you use the crop sensor camera with a 400, you end up with a 640 which is exactly what you would have if you were shooting a full frame camera with a 600 millimeter lens, you'd have 600. So you're actually 40 millimeters longer and a little bit better reach than a 600 millimeter. For that reason, the crop sensor camera to me, if you're trying to shoot something that's further away, then you can get it full frame or even half frame. Most of the time, I've, I'm happy if I can get a bird quarter frame. Bigger birds are easier to get, you know, because they're much bigger birds. You can get some of these egrets and herons that are three feet tall. You know, it's easier to get a full frame picture of a water bird or a large bird than it is to get a picture of a cardinal or a vireo or a warbler or, you know, any of these small species of birds. They're very tiny and you have to get really, really close. And in case you haven't noticed, wildlife and especially birds don't really like humans all that much. Uh, you'll find them, you can get close to them when they're in areas that, are, that have a lot of people and a lot of traffic uh, going through the, the reserve all the time and they get used to seeing people and you can get a little bit closer to them. But truly wild birds, especially the birds that migrate down from up in Canada where there's not a lot of people, uh, they're skittish and they are very, very hard to get close to. So trying to get close to them so you can get a full frame picture is pretty much impossible. You're lucky to get a quarter frame picture. And I've had some deep, some luck getting pictures, you know, birds that are like a little over eighth frame, which is pretty small in the frame, uh, and still being able to make a reusable picture out of it, but much smaller than that. And you're not going to, to be able to get, uh, you know, do anything with it. By the time you crop it that much, the resolution is going to start falling apart uh, and you won't get a very sharp picture. You can see the bird, but it's not a good picture. So for that reason, the crop sensor camera gives you a little bit of an advantage by 240 millimeters on a 400 millimeter lens. Obviously, if you're shooting a 500, it's 1.6 times that. A 600, 1.6 times that, which gives you over 900 millimeters. And if you're doing an 800, it's like a ridiculous amount. It's over 1,200, almost about 1,300 millimeters, a long, long lens. So again, but I'm, I'm mainly doing these videos to talk to people that can't afford a 1DX Mark II, or even a 5DSR, or a $10,000, $12,000 Canon lens. I certainly can, and, I, you know, and I'm really making these videos for people that, that can buy maybe the low-end professional or mid-range professional, 
Uh, but the mid-range would be like a $3,800 camera. The 5 DSR is $3,800. The 5D Mark IV, the new one that just came out to replace the 5D Mark III, is $3,600. The, the really best deal right now is a 5D Mark III. That's still an excellent camera, uh, and it's only about $2,500. It's come down from 36, so it's dropped about $900, and at times you can get deals or get a used one cheaper than that. So that's kind of the best deal going at the moment. Uh, and it's obviously as time marches on, new models come out, things are going to change, and you might be able to pick up something else for less money. But even if you, were a, if you came out with a 5D Mark III, that's not the best, our best camera for doing bird photography. And we're really talking for photo bird photography or any photography that you cannot get close enough to your subject to put it at least half frame to full frame. That would include some sports that you, where you have to shoot from a long distance uh, or any kind of thing, but mostly I deal with bird photography because that's what I do the most of. I do some landscape and, and, for, and architectural and obviously I would use the 5D Mark III for that because you can get fairly close to it or you're doing a wide vista and using a wide angle lens anyway for landscapes. So that would be the best camera because it's got better resolution at being a full frame camera. And that's true of any, you know, the 6D, 5D4, Mark III, uh, and of course the 5 DSR is a, a, an outstanding camera. If you've never seen that camera and you get a chance to shoot with one, uh, please do. You will be astonished at how sharp those pictures are. And that camera you can crop quite a bit. But the 5DSR is also a $3,800 camera. So that's why I included it in the list, but it's kind of the exception here. If you can afford a 5DSR, you really don't need to watch this video. Just go out and get one because you can put it in the 1.6 times crop mode, get the same distance and reach on a 400 that you get you know, with the 7D Mark II, and, and it's, it's going to be much higher resolution. However, it's only 19.6, so it'll equal about the exact same thing as a Canon 7D Mark II. But then if you want to shoot landscapes or architecturals, you go back to your full frame 50.6 megapixels and you will get ridiculously sharp images. Uh, if you get that thing focused, it is astounding and you'll love it. Uh, I know I did. Uh, unfortunately, it's not real good for bird photography and, and, and the resolution is not going to be any better because you have to put it in the 1.6x crop mode to get most of your birds. Again, if you can get this bird full frame, the 5DSR, best camera. 5D Mark III, excellent camera. 5D Mark IV would be between the 5D Mark III and because it's 30 megapixels and the 5DSR. The 6D would be the low end because it's, the, it's, it's a great camera and I own one and I shot one doing bird photography for a long time with a 150 to 500 Sigma and it did a very good job. I've gotten some excellent pictures. However, even with a 500 on a full frame sensor, it doesn't get you as close. So you get fewer shots because you have to be within a certain distance of the bird. And the further reach you have, the more you can do and the more shots that you can get and the likelihood of them being better uh, is going to be a lot, a lot greater. Uh, because obviously the bigger you can get the bird in the frame, the better your camera is going to be able to focus on that bird and get the eye sharp and the more keepers you're going to end up with. But uh, as the old saying goes, a picture's worth a thousand words. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The picture you're looking at now was taken with a Canon 7D Mark II. And it's at a distance that I would consider, this is about a quarter frame. If you figure this bird down in each corner, you know, full frame would pretty much be quarter frame, maybe slightly less. Uh, but if you can get a bird this size on a frame, you will have no trouble. Number one, your camera will focus on it fairly easily. Uh, and number two, you can enlarge this. Uh, as you can see, I can blow this up a little bit. You can enlarge this and once it locks in, uh, you've got pretty good resolution there. No problem with trying to get that to be full size. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy, easy match with this one. However, this is probably way closer than I can get most of the time. This is what I would consider that I don't worry too much about having the picture at this size. I, can, I know what I can do with it in processing. Uh, obviously this is Lightroom uh, and I know how good it's going to be when I take the picture because I've done enough processing that I can figure out, okay, I know what I can do with this picture. If I blow it up and it looks like it's in, and it's in good focus, then I don't have a problem knowing that I'll have a, a picture that's usable when I get back home and put it on the computer. Now, however, if you look at this picture, this is the 5D Mark III. 
as you can see, exactly the same settings. Everything is exactly the same. Uh, nothing has changed except the fact that the, now, the owl is now much smaller. He's quite a bit smaller. You know, you're going from this to this. And you can actually, if I go into the dual mode here, and I take and put this up here, now you can see them both side by side. And if you, you can see it here quite a bit, you know, and see how much bigger, but when you blow them both up, you can see how much bigger he is. <laughs> and this, this is your 240 millimeters that the crop sensor will give you. And as you can see, both pictures are pretty sharp. This is blown up even more, and it's pretty much as sharp as this one is. Uh, now, however, when you start cropping these, and let me go back out here, and go back to the full frame mode, and we'll go back to the 7D Mark II, when you crop this picture, you pretty much, and it's back in the original, uh, when you crop this picture, you're pretty much going to get it down to about like this. This is probably what you're going to do, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, sorry for the little, little clip you see down here. The owl kept falling out of the tree. I uh, figured I'd have to use a stuffed owl because, or a stuffed animal because I uh, didn't think I was going to get a bird to sit still long enough in the same position that I could take these pictures after taking, you know, taking the time to change the camera on the back of the lens. and. Uh, these pictures were taken, I, you know, pretty much all I did was just change the camera body out. Took 7D off and uh, put the 5D on. And this is about where you would crop that. Now you can see from, you know, before, this is how much more you're going to have to crop this one. And if you take this one, it's going to come down. And it's pretty much going to be about like that. And as you can see, you know, I can actually go back over here and put that in crop. That's how big the rectangle is to get the bird that size. And this is how much smaller it is, so that's much how much less of the picture. And I can move him over a little bit, and that's what's going to happen to this. So if you look at these pictures, now they pretty much look almost the same. However, this picture is cropped in more. If you look at some of the area around in here, which is you can do on both pictures now, this is a little bit softer. It's less, a little bit less noise in here. And it's, a lot of that is due because you're not cropped as much. The more you crop, the bigger the pixels get and the more they kind of look like this. Uh, that's why if you just crop it way in, you'll get this will start getting worse and worse. But at the, at the same time, if you crop it all the way in, which is this is like a one to two crop, and it's all the way in, as you can see from up here. Uh, if you crop it all the way in it, to this level, it's still, uh, you know, it's still got, you can still see the detail. The problem is, this is probably your best scenario. This is probably about what you're going to be able to get, you know, out of this. And I, and I go back over here, and let me take these back to normal here. Let's, let me go back and reset them. Uh, now that we've seen that, and I can reset this one. And now you can see that this picture doesn't need to be cropped near as much as this picture. Now you figure that if you take this picture and say go maybe an eighth screen, which would make the bird about half as big as it is right now, which in many cases, that's as close as you're going to get to some of these small birds. Not always, but a lot of times you can go ahead and, and make this picture usable, even if it's eighth scale. But you can figure out that if I had to crop it this much, and you can already start to see in the background when you, know, when you blow it up, that some of this is starting to get a little bit noisy and you're losing some resolution, the more you blow it up, the more resolution you're going to get. So that's why having this picture is so much better than having this picture. And again, comparing them side by side, you know, it's just, it's just like, I won't say it's night and day, but it is a significant amount. And when you go from, from this to this, you're actually further away. So this is your 640 millimeters, this is your true 400 millimeters. So it does make a big difference. Again. I don't see much difference in, in some of these. There's the same bird on both sides. Uh, go back to a full frame here. And I would rather have this picture as I would have rather than having this picture. Could I work with this? Yes, and I have to many, many times when it's that small and even smaller. But you figure that if you, if it's this small, if you take this down to what would be an eighth of this picture and it, you go back the same amount, just think about how tiny that bird would be here. You would not be able to, number one, you'd have a hard time focusing on it, and number two, you'd never blow it up that much. 
So, you know, this is about, if it was this big, you could probably live with it. As you can see, you can blow it up and it's still pretty good. Uh, it's got pretty good resolution, but think about blowing it up twice as much. After seeing the pictures, I think you might agree that the Canon 7D Mark II is a great camera for doing bird photography. The 1.6x crop factor means that you get 240 extra millimeters out of a 400 millimeter lens, now giving you 640 millimeters, and that's a big deal. You can never have a long enough lens when you're doing bird photography. Uh, I wish I had a longer lens every time I go out, but I don't, and I, I'm using this, the crop sensor camera, so I get that extra 240 millimeters, and as you saw in the pictures, it does make a difference you'll end up with a lot more keepers with a Canon 7D Mark II than you will with a full frame. Full frame camera, get excellent pictures with it still, even with a 400, you just have to be closer to be able to get a picture that's going to be a keeper. Uh, that's why I say you'll get more pictures that are keepers with a 7D Mark II than you will with a full frame camera, no matter what full frame camera you use. The one thing we haven't talked about is frame rate. The frame rate of like a 5 DSR is only five frames per second. A 5D Mark III is only 6, and a 6D is 4.5. The 7D Mark II, however, is 10 frames per second, and that's also a big deal. If you're trying to shoot birds that are flying, or birds that are doing any kind of action, you know, a great egret or something, you know, catching fish, those kind of things, anything that requires the, the bird or the animal to be moving, you can do that, find that the high speed frame rate, and it just is spectacular what you can get. I've gotten some amazing pictures that I didn't even think I got until I got home and processed them. You put the camera in high speed, uh, you know, multi frame, continuous shooting. Uh, I use back button focus. You can still use front button if you want to, the shutter button. Uh, I, I recommend going to front to back button focus, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, put the camera in AI servo. You know, on the back frame, I push down the, sh the uh, focus button in the back, and I just keep it held down the whole time. And when I get the center point on the bird, I pull the trigger. And with, with continuous shooting, you can get 10, 12, 14, 15 frames, depending on what you're shooting. If you're shooting raw, you can probably get about 15 or 16 before the buffer starts filling up. If you're shooting raw plus JPEG, a large JPEG like I do, I get about maybe 10 to 12 pictures before it starts slowing down a little bit. Uh, if you're shooting in JPEG, which I don't recommend, uh, because you have limited what you can do with it in processing. Uh, if you're shooting that, it pretty much is continuous and just keeps going. The files are so small that it'll just keep right on taking pictures. But you'll end up with a lot of pictures if you do that very much. So you have to be careful because you got to remember that when you get home, if you hold that shutter button down very long and do, you know, you'll do 10 frames a second. That's a lot of, you're rolling off a lot of pictures that you've got to go through at the end. So, you know, you use it when you need it, but you don't use it when you don't need it. Uh, I turn it on if I'm doing flying birds or trying to get any kind of a bird in doing anything that requires him moving and me trying to guess when he's going to do whatever it is I'm trying to photograph. Uh, in that case, you just put it on continuous, AI servo, and just pull the trigger and just hold it down until he does what he's going to do and you get, it, you get the shot. And when you get home, you'll be amazed at what you can get. You know, you'll get that bird with his wings in exactly the right, you know, position which you may not have gotten with, a, with only five frames per second or six frames per second. The extra four frames that you get over a 5D Mark III makes a difference as well. So between the crop sensor part of it and the extra millimeters you get, the extra 240 out of a 400 and the 10 frames per second, that's another reason that I think that the uh, 7D Mark II is the best camera out there for bird photography, at least in Canon line. Uh, I shoot Canon, so I can't speak about Nikon or any other brand. Uh, I've never had a chance to check any of those and test them. Uh, they may be as good or better, I don't know, but I'm a Canon shooter and I just know about Canon cameras mostly as far as having first-hand experience, which is about the only thing I report on. If you like this video and it was, you found it helpful, uh, please hit the like button. I would appreciate that to know that at least you watched it and did enjoy it. Uh, if you want to see more of my videos upcoming or the ones that are already posted, I have about six videos on here already on YouTube, uh, hit the subscribe button and help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate that. That helps me with YouTube. And if you uh, want to contact me, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please send them to uh, through either through YouTube or to my email address, which is dscott at rcscottphotography.com. My website is www.rcscottphotography.com. I have a lot of my bird pictures posted on my website, so if you want to see any of the pictures I've taken with this camera and these lenses, you can go to my website and see a lot of them. At the end of this video, I always usually run over the credits part I usually run some of my pictures at the end with a little background music. If you want to stay tuned, you'll get a chance to see some of the pictures I've taken with, these, with this camera and these lenses. 
So if you enjoyed it, I'm, I'm happy you did, and I want to thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.